Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Welcome to Walk the Line, where I'm your host, OG Chris Murray. Y'all know what time it is. Time to give y'all those golden picks for week one as the dynasty kicks off another season. Okay, first up, we got Vitamin, those Dallas Cowboys versus Omatic and those Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, the Cowboys are putting together a fast linebacker group. But my question is, even with all that lightning speed, can these guys figure out how to make a gel with stopping the run because they struggled against it last year and they are heading to Tampa Bay to face a run-heavy style offense with those Buccaneers? One guy I expect to have a big game for these Dallas Cowboys is wide receiver C.D. Lamb because last year these Buccaneers struggled against the passing attack. Let's switch gears. Omatic, he brought in running back Clyde Edwards-Hilaire to beef up his rushing attack, but it really starts with quarterback Noah Folks. This guy threw six INTs last season. Whenever you're up there in that high uh, margin with turnovers, you always going to put your team in a bad, 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 bad situation. Now you're facing an aggressive Dallas Cowboys who team who loves the blitz. Take your time, take advantage of those one-on-one -on -one matchups, and pray that your guys catch the ball for you. Got to make a pick with my pick. I'm locked in with the Dallas Cowboys getting a dub on the road going into week two. Moving on next, we have Sweets and those New England Patriots versus the Schemer and those Las Vegas Raiders. Mac Jones is entering his second year with the offensive coordinator, uh, Kevin McGroovin. Expect his numbers to be a whole lot more different this year because last year, the INT was, was, was way too high. Got a new uh, weapon, new rookie wide receiver. Uh, Cedric Stevens, so I'm expecting Mac Jones big numbers with the passing attack. Raider secondary can't keep up with the way that Sweets likes to pass the ball. Let's talk Raiders now. If he plans on making this a game, he's going to have to control the tempo of this matchup. Can't afford to let this get into a shootout, so you're going to have to lean on your rushing attack. However, my pick for this game is Sweets getting a dub going into week two. Moving on next, we got Eagles and the I mean, we got Beano and the Philadelphia Eagles versus HBO and those Houston Texans. Now, Beano, you can't fall victim to the trap. You gotta come out here and play a complete full quarter game. But I do like Devontae wide receiver Devontae Smith and wide receiver Will Roberts uh, matchup in this game. I feel like this secondary uh, gives up way too many yards when they're facing elite wide receivers. So I'm definitely expecting big things from your passing attack. HBO, can you get out of way? Get out of the way yourself. You gotta open up your playbook, man. You gotta. You're gonna have to figure out on the offense side of the ball how to get more creative with this offense. You have the weapons. You have the pieces. Let's get creative. Now on the defense side of the ball, you're gonna have to figure out how to create pressure. You cannot let Jalen Hurts sit in that pocket and pick you apart. If you decide to not follow any of these steps, it's going to be a long day for those Houston Texans at home. Now, I got to make a pick, and I'm locked in with those Philadelphia Eagles getting the dub on the road going into week two. Moving on next, we got a heavy, heavy, heavy hitter matchup with KP and those Baltimore Ravens versus Bruce and those New York Giants. Now, KP gets a top 10 user out of the gate. Last season, he managed to finish when going up against top tier users in the DML, 6-3. This is one of those games where he has to win by controlling the rushing attack, okay? I understand that, you know, in, in certain games, KP comes out and loves to pass the ball, but in this game right here, you're going to have to figure out how to establish the run game first, which will allow your passing attack to open up because Bruce has one of those defensive schemes where though he can make you think that you're seeing one thing and then bam, boom, it's the complete total opposite. So you're going to have to lean on figuring out how to get the running game going first, which should allow your passing attack with all those beautiful fast wide receivers open wide up. Now, Bruce, this is, this is the one right here, okay? Uh, you brought in Nick Bosa and that one-two punch combo with him and Dexter Lawrence hasn't gelled the way to, the way to your liking. But this is the matchup right here where they should be able to build some type of momentum with establishing that, that, that dangerous combo. Facing the offensive line who gave up 50 sacks last year, I'm expecting big numbers from Nick Bosa and Dexter Lawrence in this matchup controlling this Baltimore Ravens offense however I gotta make a pick with well, my pick I feel like I'm gonna have to go with the Baltimore Ravens and KP 
because they have so many, so many, so many explosive weapons on that offense. Moving on next, we got Marley and the New Orleans Saints versus Styles and those Kansas City Chiefs. Now, Style, I mean, uh, Marley made it to the uh, divisional round, lost last year. Defense was fully healthy, and he showed what these guys were capable of doing. This is their first big test. Can't get no bigger than this with guys like Tyreek Hill, Hartman, Patrick Mahomes. And you're on the road going to Arrowhead? Yes, can't get so bigger than this. I'm definitely looking to see what this defense can do against this high-powered Kansas City Chief offense. The first thing you're going to have to eliminate is the big plays. And how you eliminate it is putting your number one guy up on their number one guy. And let's see who's going to win the matchup. But this is definitely going to be a big test for those Saints. And I'm expecting to see what these guys want to do. Now, with the Chiefs, Styles, after coming off of a Super Bowl loss, he enters this season with all of his pieces still intact. Got a couple new faces in that locker room, but majority of his uh, main group of guys are still there. The question is... Can this team figure out how to shape that loss and get locked back in to competing and making another run at another banner? I think that they can because you got a guy like Tyreek Hills and Patrick Mahomes. Come on, man. It doesn't get any more dangerous than that. But Patrick Mahomes is going to have to figure out how to take the ball outside of the pocket. And what I mean by that is extending plays because the Saints secondary has to be put into bad situations where as though they're not out there just covering a guy for a quick one two seconds they're going to need Patrick Mahomes to extend those plays for a good five or seven seconds to make guys get a little bit lost back there and bam hit Tyreek Hill or Hartman over the top definitely expecting to see what this Chiefs team is going to do now I got to make a pick ah, this is this is going to be a good game good game Clo a whole lot closer than what guys may think but I got to make a pick and I'm locked in with the Chiefs getting the dub going on to week two moving on next we got Taz and those Detroit Lions versus the bus and the Chicago Bears now young Lions team showed out last season managed to make their first DML playoff appearance but that's over now you guys got to figure out how to carry that same energy and momentum into this matchup because you get a division 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 meet who's coming off by far one of their worst seasons to date in the DML now, you might can use that aggressive because he's definitely going to come out with that mentality to show everyone that he's back. So, you might can use that aggressiveness against him and hope that Justin Fields makes mistakes to where as though you guys can capitalize off of it. But, I'm definitely looking to see what these Detroit Young Lions is going to do with that second year after coming off of that playoff berth. Now, the bus coming off, like I just mentioned, one of the worst seasons to date in the DML. Okay? New coaching staff, uh, new play calling, but all of that is over now. Okay, you're entering the second year with that guy in your system. Now, let's see what this bus mentality is going to be like entering this matchup. I feel like he's going to come out super aggressive. You know, grounding and pounding and leaning on that play action and sprinkling to get guys, you know, a little bit off their feet. But, I, 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 who this is going to be... This is going to be a good one, man. It's going to be a good one. But I got to make a pick. And with my pick, I got to go with the bus getting a W at home. Because I just feel like this is going to be a season where he's going to try to make a comeback and let guys know that he's back. That season definitely, definitely is going to be his motivation to definitely, like I said, getting back and letting guys know what's going on. Moving on next, we got C-Rob and the Carolina Panthers versus flair in those Denver Broncos now this game is going to come down to one thing what user wants it the most both guys are like right there uh, uh, in that bottom tier of the DML but the talent as far as roster wise is there we have C-Rob we have of course White Lightning and all those other beautiful pieces uh, and all those explosive, wep uh, explosive weapons on the defensive side you have flair with by far one of the most young on paper talented offense but just can't seem to make it work now one thing i do notice about when i watch these guys play when their running game is clicking it seems to make things a whole lot more easier for both users now with my pick i'm gonna have to go measure it down to stick skills uh i think c rob gets this w because i feel like c rob definitely definitely 
is better on the sticks than Flair. Moving on next, we have JB Zeno's Buffalo Bills versus Tightwork and the Miami Dolphins. Now, JB Zeno started off last season blazing hot. Started off the uh, couple games 6-0. and And then when them heavy hitters started coming up on that roster, you turned into a little bit of Casper. This is your first test. Okay, you're facing a division foe who swept you last season. This is your first shot at at cracking that redemption mark, okay? And the first step to you getting the W against tight work is number one, you're going to have to figure out how to convert on third down, okay? Short drives puts your defense in bad, bad situations. Number two, you got to protect Josh Allen, okay? He was running for dear life in both matchups last year. Number three, you're going, when you're playing against tight work and his passing attack, is tearing you up more than his rushing attack that's a big 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 no-no okay tight work definitely can pass the ball however however when his passing attack is tearing you up more than his rushing attack you gotta figure out something young fella now tight work stick to the formula you beat this guy twice last year you have the formula you have the blueprint i don't expect you to change anything in this matchup but I gotta make a pick, and with my pick, I'm definitely locked in with the Dolphins getting a W going into week three. Moving on next, we got JB and the Tennessee Titans versus Gab and those Jacksonville Jaguars. JB, listen, you're facing a team who Achilles Hill, Achilles Hill is stopping the run. Derrick Henry and Dominique Crowder should be able to get you those four or five yards to help you keep moving the chains because this is not the matchup where you're gonna want to lean on your passing attack. Now, Gav and these Jaguars live off of big plays. I'm starting to call them the big play Jacksonville Jaguars. Offense averages about between 13 and 17 yards when they're passing the ball. And when they're running the ball, it's about right there between that five and a half, six yards mark. Now, it seems like whatever Gav decides to do, either way direction he decides, it just seems to work. You swept these guys last season by a large number. I don't expect Gav to switch up anything as far as his play call style because he has the blueprint and has the formula. Now, my pick, I got to go with the Jacksonville Jaguars and Gav getting that W going on the week two. Moving on next, we have Addy and those Cleveland Browns versus under two rated and the Washington football team. Force meets force in this matchup. We have running back Nick Chubb who destroyed the DML single season rushing record versus the X Factor D-line of the Washington football team with big names like Chase Young. Montez Sweat, De'Ron Payne, uh, Jonathan Allen. Force meets force in this game. Who wins it? It's going to boil down to can the Washington football team stop Nick Chubb and make Andy get into his old ways of being a pass first offense. This is going to be a good one. However, I just feel like the Washington football team is going to make some mistakes on the offensive side of the ball, which is going to put this team in bad situations. So I got to make my pick, and I'm locked in with the Browns getting a W going into week two. Moving on next, we got Expert in those Arizona Cardinals versus Marizzi and those Minnesota Vikings. Expert's coming off under the season where he was giving up a lot of force Ws. I don't feel like in this matchup he's going to do that. Expecting him to come out with the mentality of trying to drop 50 on Marizzi heads because this is just one of those games. You know, however, Marizzi, this is one of those games where he feels, feels like it's one of those matchups where he has something to prove, meaning he's going up against one of the elite uh, top 10 DML users, so he feel like he can hang with those guys. So I feel like he's going to come out with a chip on his shoulder in this matchup, showing everyone that he can compete with the elite of the DML. However, I got to make a pick, and with my pick, I'm locked in with Expert. Because I just feel like Expert is going to come into this matchup with, with a whole lot more motivation than Marizzi. Even though this is a month, well, this is a game that both guys want to win. Um, but I, I'm locked in with the cards, man. Cards getting the dub, going into week two. Moving on next, we got Squire in the New York Jets versus SJ Notes, Indianapolis Colts. Jets, you're going to have a handful this week with that man JT coming to town. It's clear what you have to do. You got to shut down. The coach rushing attack. Now, that is that it sounds easy, but when you facing a guy like JT that seems to not go down unless you and all of your other coaching, your other players, 
is trying to take this man down, the work might be cut out for these Jets because I just don't see them having the pieces to slow them down. But the best thing that you can do, the best, best thing that you can do to make this a game, keep the ball out of his hand. That's it. Keep the ball out of JT hand. How you do that is by releasing your beast, Saquon Barkley. I feel like this is going to be a matchup where both of these running backs are going to want to come out and state that, listen, I'm better than this guy. But just feel like JT is going to be too much for that Jets defense. So with my pick, I'm locked in with the Colts. Wait, scratch that. I'm locked in with the Jets getting the upset pick because I feel like he has something to prove. My first upset pick of the week. Moving on next, we got stop. We got easy. And those Pittsburgh Steelers versus the big homie and those Cincinnati Bengals. Two division foes who's trying to establish themselves within the tough division. Okay. The big homie gets his first crack at rookie quarterback AJ Bates. Who Rookie quarterback's debut in Pittsburgh has not been good, okay? So, the Steelers is going to figure out how to get this guy gelling with this system, but not putting too much on the young man's shoulder, okay? I think uh, the rushing attack is going to play a major part in the success of A.J. Bates' uh, career with the Pittsburgh Steelers. However, the Bengals are facing a rookie quarterback, okay? You're going to have to rattle this kid. You cannot allow this kid to come out and get comfortable in that pocket, the where's oh, he's picking you apart. Get pressure, rattle him, give him a big DML, walk him, and make him cause turnovers. You want to kill this kid's spirit from quarter one. You want to constantly keep beating up on him. However, got to make a pick. And with this one, I feel like I'm going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Thanks to uh, Easy has uh, uh, the pieces that could put this team in the best position to secure this W in this matchup. Moving on next, we got Centaur and the Seattle Seahawks versus Skill Trade and those Los Angeles Rams. Now, the Seahawks entered this matchup with a big question mark at the quarterback position. Quarterback Russell Wilson was let go during free agency. So the Rams team has to be smiling from air to air because you're going to have to put in order for this to work for y'all, you're going to have to put your superstar X-Factor cornerback Jalen Ramsey on their superstar X-Factor wide receiver DK Metcalf and make who's, whoever started at that quarterback position beat you by passing the ball to somebody else. Now, looking at this Seattle Seahawks roster, they have Josh Allen, Josh Rosen, sorry about that, Josh Rosen, who's a 71 overall quarterback and a rookie quarterback who is a 63 overall. That seems like a cakewalk to me when you got a guy by the name of Aaron Donald on that defensive line, okay, and you have a loaded secondary with a true number one guy who could come out, with, which is Jalen Ramsey, who can lock up their number one threat. Now, I feel like I said, I feel like this is what the Rams have to do. Now, this Rams team has been playing by far underneath what that roster is loaded with. Okay, as far as talent-wise, just can't figure out to make it gel. But if you stick to what I just said, you should be able to lock up this W. However, got to make my pick, and I feel like the Seattle Seahawks is going to figure out somehow, some way, to build off some form of motivation to get this game locked in. So with my pick, I'm going with the Seahawks getting a dub going into week two. Moving on next, we got Nasty Newt and the Atlanta Falcons, a.k.a. the Pickle King of 2023 season versus the ex-Pickle King with Dub and those Los Angeles Chargers. Now, besides guessing how many picks is going to be thrown in this game, let's break down this matchup. Okay, you got quarterback Josh Valdez, who's entering his second season as the Falcons quarterback. Young man, listen, you, you, you got the Pickle King record, okay? You enter in your second year, you're going to have to cut those turnovers down, all right? They bring in a guy by the name of... Uh, Mike Evans, who has a little bit left in the tank and uh, is, is a step up from what those wide receivers were out there in Atlanta. And you have a tight end by the name of Pitts, who's a matchup nightmare for anybody that's sticking him. you got to figure out how to get that ball into their hands, okay? Now, switching sides. This is the first time by far we have seen this LA Chargers team fully healthy. Okay, um, normally I would say in this matchup, 
lean on your rushing attack because Justin Herbert uh, has uh, grown the turnover bug. But in this matchup right here, Dub, I'm telling you right now, come out with a gun slinger mentality because you're facing the secondary who lost a key piece, key piece this past off season, okay? In that secondary, so I'm telling you to come out, get those, uh, get your wide receiver uh, group going, and come out with the mentality of slinging that rock. Now, I gotta make a pick, and with this one, I just feel like I feel like the Chargers is gonna make a good run. I'm gonna say a good three drives, where it's gonna put them out with a large lead early against this Falcons team and I feel like the Falcons doesn't have enough explosive weapons to get them will not have enough explosive weapons to get them back into the game so I'm locking with the Chargers getting a W at home building off those building off that home crowd energy now you got all the picks y'all see my lock picks for the week and let's dive into the DML game of the week okay man we got my Green Bay Packers versus Ramsey and those San Francisco 49ers. Now this game by far is possibly, possibly the NFC Championship preview. Okay. Um. First thing, break down these. Let's break down these uh, San Francisco 49ers. Everything on this offense starts with one player, one player only. Running back J.K. Dobbins. Okay. When this guy is going, when this guy is running that downhill style football, and he's getting them four, to five, to six yards per carry. That allows Ramsey in this play action game to make this offense a whole lot more dangerous. Okay, so my first thing is I'm going to have to zero in how to shut down that rushing attack and try to make this guy as much as one dimensional as possible. It's going to be tough, but I feel like my guys can do it. Secondly, the defense for these uh, 49ers is going to figure out how to eliminate uh, big plays because sometimes they're overly aggressive. Whereas though they're trying to jump the ball and that causes large gaps or large passing windows to open up for this defense. But this is definitely going to be a good matchup right here. Let's talk about my Green Bay Packers. Okay. My Packers, you're the first thing that we always uh, try to try to pride ourselves on is each, I mean, each week is taking care of the ball. Okay. So as long as we're taking care of the ball and not uh, putting our offense in bad situations, um, starting off gotta move the chains of course um keep the chains moving and a guy that's going to play a big role in that is running back quincy quincy hitchens all right we don't have a rod no more so just I mean, um jordan love is the quarterback so i feel like quincy is going to play a big role in how successful jordan love will be in our office in our system Next thing, defense. Defense is going to have to play as one because, like I said, on about the 49ers, they're one of the most balanced style offenses you're going to face in the DML as far as having a solid rushing attack and passing attack. We're going to figure out, going to have to figure out how to try to make these guys as as much as one dimensional as possible. Um, it's, it's going to have to be a mixture of pressure, taking away key guys in certain plays. Uh, slowing down J.K. Dobbins, but I feel like we have the defensive group who comes out week after week after week playing with a chip on their shoulder to be the best defense that they could be in the DML. So, of course, I'm never going to pick against myself. So, with my pick, I'm locked in with my Packers getting the W heading into week two. Okay, so we got each game breakdown. We got my lock picks. We got uh, the DML game of the week breakdown. If you feel like I got any games wrong, drop a comment. Tell me who your lock picks is. I'm the OG Chris Murray. We out.